Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about how to find the volume that is bound between two surfaces. So basically, we know that we, if we want to find the, the volume underneath a surface in this, um, as a function of x and y, all we need to do is we find the double integral of that function within this region of integration d. But if we want to find the volume between two surfaces, all we need to do, so this is going to be very similar to what we did with single integrals when we found the area between two curves. Essentially, all we need to do is we need to subtract those two functions. So we're going to have f2, which is the top one, minus f1 xy dA. And that's just going to give you the volume between two uh, surfaces. So just to give you an example of this, let's have the following graph. So let us have two surfaces. The first one is going to be represented by a cone. And then the second surface on the top is going to be represented by um, a plane, so a horizontal plane with respect to x and y. So this function is going to be called z equals to 1, so that's just a constant plane. And then for this function here, so let's trace the, the region of integration. So this is going to be a region of integration d, and I'm going to draw the region of integration here just to show you what it looks like. So it's just a unit circle. So this is the xy plane. And obviously, we have this volume here. So the idea is to find the volume between these two surfaces. So that means that we want to find the volume of that cone. So we need to start with some limits here. So basically, how are we going to go about finding this? We want to find the volume of the cone. So how do we do it? Well, the, the simplest method is to basically subtract the two functions. So first of all, the function of the cone, so set equals to square root of x squared plus y squared. So basically that means that this cone is intersecting the, this plane at the points minus 1, 1, and 1. So basically it's just going to be the same silhouette as that circle there. So this is the same as saying that the cone has height 1 h equals to 1 and radius equals to 1 as well. So that's a cone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the integral but before we set it up, what we want to do is, obviously, this is going to be fairly complicated to, to compute because we have, okay, so we have the first function on the top, so that's 1, minus the function in the bottom, so that's square root of x squared plus y squared, dx dy on some region d. So immediately you can see that this integral is fairly complicated to compute. So what we're going to do is we're going to transform to polar coordinates, which will make things easier since our region of integration is circular. So in this case, what we're going to have is theta, theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And then r is just going to go from 0 to 1. So let's make the substitution here. So let's transform this integral. So 0, 2 pi, then 0, 1. And we're going to have here, we're going to have r squared. The square root of that, that's just r. So this is going to be 1 minus r. And then the, the element of integration is going to be r d r d theta. So now that we have this, we can perform integration as normal. So we're going to have 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 1. So r minus r squared d r d theta, which is the same as 0 to 2 pi. Now integrate with respect to r, so this becomes r squared over 2 minus r cubed over 3 from 0 to 1 d theta. And then this is going to give us the following, so we're going to have 0 to 2 pi of 1 over 6, so that's just a constant, d theta, which is the same as 1 over 6 theta. 2 pi 0 and then this is going to be pi on 3 so according to our method of integration the volume um, of that cone or the volume between those two surfaces should be uh, pi on 3 units cubed so how do we verify whether this is correct or not well we can simply use 
the equation of uh, the volume of a cylinder, sorry, not a cylinder, a cone, which is basically the following. It is pi r squared h on 3. So in this case, our radius is 1, our height is 1, so that's going to be pi on 3. So yes, indeed, the volume of that cone is uh, pi on 3. And what you might wonder, well, why do we want to find the volume if we already have a formula for that? Well, the thing is that you can actually derive this formula if you, if you exchange those limits by uh, generic limits like some constant r and h. But other than that, you can essentially find the volume between any two surfaces just by setting up the integral right using this particular form of the integral. So it's essentially just subtracting two volumes. You're subtracting uh, the volume of the surface underneath from the volume of the surface um, underneath the surface on the top because if you were to take the, the whole volume beneath the surface it would actually include this little chunk here but by subtracting the volume underneath this lower surface you're actually cutting that chunk out and you can get this little volume in space that is confined between those two surfaces in the same way that you would find the area between two curves in a single integral so hopefully this illustrates another really nice and interesting application of double integrals and in the next video, we can finally get started on talking about triple integrals and some of their applications.